Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. So now we are able to show these all items list in this one, right? So now it's time for us to work on the single item here. Now here we are showing these all items. We got the item and we need to show this here. So I can change this one to item dot name. Okay. And here we'll be showing item dot quantity. Okay. Item dot quantity. And here we can say it as an item dot price. Okay. So here this is an item dot price. That's it. Now let's try to refresh this page and we will see the output. So right now we are not we are not able to see any items list. So here we will add some message here. So if you don't have any items in the list, so please add item. Here we will try to show it. So here we can write a condition in such a way that so here we are trying to do multiple returns in a single component. So if items dot length, okay, if items dot length, if it is not there means then I will return the value or do uh, please add items. Okay, now let's see whether we are able to see, see please add items or otherwise we can have an H3. Let's see, we can able to see it or not. So H3, we are adding it. Now here we are able to see the please add items. If you want, you can make it center also. So we will use this style thing text align and I will make it as in center so everything looks great right so it should be an object we enter into JavaScript mode like this and it should be an object yeah fine so now um, everything is looking fine now I will try to add an item here so I added an item and this one is something like add item we are able to show the item value also now at the bottom, I need to show the total price, total price of all these items, including the quantity. So here price per quantity, we will try to add a something like price per quantity. Okay. Price per quantity. You see, so here I am trying to add a milk packet. Okay. So we, I am trying to take it quantity of two and here the each milk packet is $5. And if I click here, we are able to show the $5 and here what I need to do, I need to show price per quantity $5 and another value what I need to show is total price is $10. So how we can show this one, let's try to do it. So here in our single item, okay, here I will try to add a due. Okay, I will try to add a due and here I will show dollar. <coughs> not dollar uh, dollar item dot price into item dot quantity so we need to show it like this now if you try to see the output value how it will look like see each one is five dollars and total price is ten dollars we are able to see the value so everything is looking fine hopefully now if i try to add an item again milk and here i will take the quantity of four this time each one costs only two dollars if i click here see two dollars and four items we are talking total price is eight dollars so we are able to show this one very nice now the what i want to show it is the total price here i want to show the total price at the bottom so what i will try to do in our items list okay and here i will add after this one so here i will use a total price so here total price is equal to something around dollar 10 or anything i will try to do it Okay, and this should be mood. Uh, so here, uh, class name total. Okay, I am taking a total, and let's go to the app.css again. The necessary came for the CSS thing. So here, I will be using total, and I will write here text align and so it will go to the end, and I will add some uh, what I can say. Mm, is that total only? I didn't save it. Okay. So where is this items list? Yeah, it's total only. So now let's go into this one. So whether whether it has moved it or not, let's try to see it. Okay. So it has moved it. So let's give some margin. Margin of two REM comma zero. Okay. So it has moved it. 
and we will give font weight of also bold okay and here i will give font size of around 20 pixel so fine so now we need to show the total price also so here this is the total price we need to show it so now what i need to do here the total price here we need to show is how we can do it is so here you need to understand one thing here we are using the items list right so here i need to show the total so that means i need to loop over each item okay i need to loop over each item and i need to calculate the value so here for this one what i can do is i so here the problem comes not the problem here you need to decide whether do i need to use the state so for example here i can use something like total price uh, total price sorry total price comma set total price is equal to uh, set st use state sorry use state of zero the first time will be zero so here do do i need to show this total price here use state should be imported from the react okay and here do i need to show the total price okay so if you want to show it like this means then you will be able to see zero now the total price depends on the items value so if you, if you want to do it means so you need to loop over each items value each items value you need to loop over and you need to get the value here you need to rethink again so whether i need to use the state value or not so remember that whenever these items get changed okay so whenever these items get changed in the app dot change whenever this item got deleted or item got added or anything it has been happened here in this one whenever this item got changed automatically what i will what it will try to do i already explained you in our previous videos that the state will drive the ui okay so the state whenever a change in state will re-render the entire component so that means whenever an items value is changing the item list is also will be re-rendered when the item list value is re-rendered means again the logic will be re-executed in this one if the logic is re-executed in this one there is no need for us to use the state value why because this items itself whenever it is changed so then you can you can make use of it then it will be re-executed right so then we can there is no need to use this one in the state again when the total price is changed you know trend again the state will again the ui will be changed there is there is there is nothing makes sense there when the items is changed the price also automatically changes when the price change means the item that doesn't mean that items are changing so here this is called as a derived state okay so you are trying to whenever you uh, think that the value is dependent on the state means then there is no need for us to create a state here so you need to rethink so here i can write something like total price is equal to so this items dot reduce i will be using the reduce method and here you will be having uh, i will show you the reduce method here so that you can be able to understand so whenever you are trying to count the values or anything so you can use this reduce method so what this reduce method will do is so here you are having an array of values so here uh, it is trying to use this reduce and here first one you will be having a callback function you can also take another function also so here you will be having a callback function so first one normally we call it as an accumulator or the total and the next one is an item we are we are getting each item and here what i need to do so here i need to okay i need to accumulator is equal to accumulator okay accumulator plus so here i need to count the value i need to count the value so item dot price into item dot quantity so i need to do it like this so now this one we need to return this accumulator we need to return this accumulator and we need to at the starting phase we need to mention the default value of this accumulator right so here you need, you can mention it as a zero <coughs> that's it so here the total price whenever the items are getting looped so items will be looped one by one and the first time the accumulator will be zero we have mentioned the default value and each item will get it so zero plus item price into quantity so here this one will become something like item price into quantity means 1 into 2 so 0 plus 2 means 2 like this it will be going on uh, looping and we will be getting the total price value so here you can catch the total price and you can display it here now if you try to see here the value so this time we don't have anything and i will add some random values milk 
and I will add quantity here and I am taking it as a four dollars each. So here the total price is 12. Fine, it's correct. And I will try to add some tomatoes and the quantity I am taking it as a four and each one is one dollar. So let's try to take it here. So four. So don't think about the what I can say. I want to say um, design and all those things. So just we'll focus on the logic. So 12, 12 plus 4, 16, we are able to get it. And if I, if I, if you try, try to add some other items, potatoes. So if I try to add here, so each one is $3. So here you'll be able to get the values, $25. So now we are able to display the values exactly. So this is how we will be doing it. Okay. So now what we have did it here, we have made use of this derived state. So this is the most important thing which you need to learn. So we have learned two concepts like control elements in this project. And also now we have learned about the derived state. So there is no need for us to use the use state here in this one. So now we have completed this total price also and displaying all these items also. Now in the next video, what we will try to do is we will try to add a close symbol or delete symbol here. And when I click on this delete, automatically this value should be deleted. So that is one thing which we will try to do. It. So we will try to do it in the next video. So I will commit this all the code in a new branch that is nothing but video-27. Okay. And I will commit this all the code. So what is that one? So here we have learned about the derived state, right? So the new thing is derived state. If I commit this all the code and if I publish this branch, so here may be having doubts or anything. So you already know about my react 18 course. So the link will be provided in the description below the GitHub repository URL, whatever the code I am trying to tell it. So it will be hosted in this GitHub repository URL. So you can go back and you can check this code. So that's it guys. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.